Then the cock crowed. This morning they dared to. They dared to murder you. In the fortress of our bodies, may our ideal live on, mingled with your blood, so that tomorrow they won't dare. They won't dare to murder us. Hey everyone, and welcome to Travel Through Stories. My name is Sean, and today I want to talk about Joseph Andre's first novel, Tomorrow They Won't Dare to Murder Us. Um, this book won the Prix Goncourt Prize in France for a debut novel, even though Andres refused to show up to Paris to accept the awards, basically explaining that he doesn't believe in competitive writing prizes because he thinks that writing and creation is antithetical to competition. This translation was just published by Verso a couple of months ago, and I was very drawn to it immediately because for various reasons, I've just been reading a lot of works about French colonialism or the French diaspora, works and authors such as uh, David Diop, Maurice Condé, Mathias Enard, and Patrick Chamasso. All of those works, by the way, are incredible, and those authors are all amazing. And this book, like those, is about French colonialism, but here it's much more about the struggle and the process of decolonialism in Algeria in the mid-20th century. Um, I'll try not to spoil too much of the specifics of this book, but I will talk about the larger story of Fernand Yvetan, um, who is a historical person whose story is well known enough that I feel like I shouldn't worry too much about spoiling it. Um, even if you know how this story ends, like all great literary historical fiction, it's still worth reading because it's in the details and the writing that the point of this book really is. Um, so I'll have to kind of spoil the general trajectory of Yvetan's life. I regrettably didn't really know that much about the Algerian war going into this book, but I've heard of Fernand Yvetan, um, who this book is really about. Um, I've read works by you know, Simone de Beauvoir, Frantz Fanon, Jean-Paul Sartre, Albert Camus, um, who all talk about him specifically and this war more generally, um, as they were all you know, politically active at this time and spoke out against, well, what this book is really about, which is the arrest, torture, trial, and execution of Fernand Yvetan by the French state during the war in Algeria. He's infamous for being the only Pied Noir, uh, or the, a European born in Algeria, um, to be executed by the state during during this war, and thus his legacy was really taken up by French anti-colonialists in the years following to demonstrate the absurdities and immorality of French colonialism. One thing that this book does so well is explore the language of war and the language of revolution. It explores how language and rhetoric are used as political weapons. That is, do we even call this event the Algerian War, or do we call it the Algerian Re Revolution? Or do we not call it either one of those things, um, and instead simply refer to it as a conflict between a state and a group of terrorists, which was the common way of talking about this in Paris at the time. In this book, in fact, at one point, uh, Yvetan is ruminating about how the French newspapers will report about a conflict between the FLN um, and the police, and the, the text reads, Today, 30 or so rebels were killed by gunfire or bombs in the backcountry, but still no war. No, not that. Power minds its language, its fatigues tailored from satin, its butchery smothered by propriety. Political rhetoric is incredibly important for framing these issues, and the discussion of how language shapes political opinion is obviously still relevant today, especially given recent events in the Near East. Later in this book, Yvetan is discouraged as he realizes the, fu the futility of his own words, and he says, not a word has come out of his mouth since he woke up. He distrusts words now. He, just, he knows they can be torn from him by force and turned inside out like a glove. The political power of language is at the heart of this book, as it should be at the heart of most books, I think. Um, this is why books like this are actually so important, as they shed light on the events and atrocities that the state's language has purposefully obscured. But as a kind of general summary uh, as to what this book is actually about, Andres in this book explores the life of Fernand Yvetan, uh, especially the events that led up to him being arrested and tortured and his subsequent trial. This book begins like an action thriller, um, recounting in dramatic details the, the event that led to Yvetan being arrested. Yvetan was a member of the Algerian Communist Party, um, but after something happens to someone very close to him, he joins the Front de l'Opération Nationale, um, or the FLN, 
um, who are taking a more active and a more physical stance against the state. At the start of this book, Ivatan is taking part in a plot to plant a couple of bombs in a factory in which he works. Now, Ivatan and the FLN um, in this book um, really want nothing to do with harming civilians. Um, so the bombs are set to go off in the middle of the night in the factory when, when no one's there. Ivatan and the FLN are characterized throughout this book as only doing violence kind of against property as an act of symbolic violence. Um, but like I noted earlier, this first part of this book really reads like a heist novel um, as it keeps switching between Yvetan and his comrades who are working to plant these bombs. Quite quickly, however, Yvetan is captured and brought in for interrogation as the police know that the bombs are placed but they can't find them. And this is where Andreas explores a really important facet of the Algerian revolution, um, which is torture. Yvetan is tortured and a part of this book is chronicling the inhumanity of this torture which people at the time in France either really couldn't believe that the French state was participating in or they were cheering on for more blood as Yvetan was labeled a traitor to the state and a terrorist. Indeed Yvetan while being tortured is trying to uh, reconcile these very present facts of him being tortured with the fact that he is a French citizen. Um, at one point, his torturers are trying to justify their actions to him, explaining that they're just trying to protect the people of Algiers. And at one point, we, we get the thoughts of, a, of the general secretary of the police in Algiers, a um, certain Paul uh, Tetkin, um, who made it clear that no one should be tortured while in custody. Um, that obviously doesn't happen, uh, but I'll just read the text. What Fernand does not know is that the general secretary of police in Algiers, Paul Tetkin, made it explicitly clear two hours ago that he forbade anyone from touching the suspect. Tetigan ha had been deported and tortured by the Germans during the war. He could, he could not understand why the police, his police, that of the France for which he'd fought, the France of the Republic, Voltaire, Hugo, Clemenceau, the France of human rights, of human rights, he was never sure when to capitalize. This France, La France, would use torture as well. Andras really explores this connection between the French state's body politic and their colonial empire and this torture of Yvetan's body. The latter really maps onto the former um, as this use of torture exposes a perversion of law and justice, among other things, as torture can't really happen in a democracy that upholds individual, in, an individual sovereignty, right? And on an unrelated note, Guantanamo Bay is still open. This book isn't all doom and gloom, though, as one thing that Andres does so well to alleviate some of this mounting pressure is by having each chapter switch back and forth between this present um, storyline and the past, which explores Yvetan's relationship with a woman named Eline leading up to the revolution. These scenes contrast brilliantly with the brutal torture scenes, as Andres really shows that he can write love scenes just as well as he can write brutal war scenes. The former really heightens the latter and vice versa as the two storylines really work together here. He does some interesting things here as well as Eline is a Jewish Polish immigrant um, and Andres uses this to connect the atrocities in Algiers back to the Nazi invasion of Poland and the treatment of the Jews during World War II. She's an interesting character by herself as well um, as she remains loyal to Yvetan um, and defiant to the police and the press. This switching back and forth uh, between the present and the past, which is really only just a couple of years before the main storyline, um, though in these, in these flashback scenes that they tell stories of, of their childhood growing up. But this also helps Andres explore the interactions between Arabs and Europeans um, in Algeria, and thus of colonialism in Algeria. While Yvetan recounts growing up in a rather multicultural setting in um, Algiers, um, the effects of colonialism can be seen throughout this book. At one point it even notes that the prisons are colonized as um, Arab inmates receive fewer blankets and fewer meals than their European counterparts. Yvetan's fight is expressively anti-colonial. He explains his intentions quite clearly at one point, saying, I took the decision to become one because I think of myself as an Algerian and I am not indifferent to the struggle, to the struggle of the Algerian people. It seemed to me wrong for the French to stand apart from the struggle. I love France. I love France very much. I love France enormously, but I have no love 
for colonialists. Ibsen's identity as an Algerian of European descent is at the heart of this book as his identity straddles the social dichotomy between French European colonizers and the Arab colonized in Algeria. Yveton and the people and people like him um, create a new identity that is neither colonizer nor colonized, but to solidify this new identity, they must destroy the system of colonial governments of go uh, colonial uh, governance in Algeria. This idea in this book is very mixed with Marxism, clearly, um, as well as previous French revolutions. Yveton is constantly reading Victor Hugo's Les Miserables um, throughout this book, um, which also goes to show that one revolution in France was, was not enough. At one point, Yveton laments that, I can tell you that it's very tough watching your country refuse to move forward, seeing the people in power close their eyes to what's happening, to the small hardships and the great ones, to the Arabs asking for equality and receiving beatings or bullets in return. The language of this book is absolutely stunning, and the way it explores these complex issues of war, revolution, colonialism, and how individuals participate, either knowingly or unknowingly, in these events is just incredible. It's also a pretty radical political book as well, as it really damns the um, French colonial the French colonial state. I'm actually really surprised that it won the Prix Goncourt, but I highly recommend this slim volume. This book is so powerful because it so effectively recreates the political life of Fernand Yvetin, and through him, the struggles um, against colonialism during the Algerian war. It moves past this specific moment, though, to engulf modern struggles for egalité et liberté, um, and perhaps not just fraternité, but also uh, fraternité, this time as well. It, it shows the inevitability of people's resistance to corrupt and colonial systems, and in that way, it's hopeful, I think. Though, as this book shows, that hopefulness shouldn't encourage complacency or anything like that. Fernand Yvetin um, wasn't alone. He was one of, well, perhaps millions who in small ways or large ways resisted. Um, I'll just end uh, on a quote that I absolutely love that embodies all of these ideas. There is no heart the state can constrain. Dreams eat into its reason like acid. Just beautiful. Thanks for watching.